So this video is a summary of L'Hopital's rule, and I highly recommend for this one that you have my free guided notes and that you pause and try the examples when prompted. If you want the notes, you can look in the description. So this video is best to watch after you have learned about L'Hopital's rule. So please just note that I am merely reviewing the details in this video as opposed to teaching it all. I do have other videos where I go into every single little detail. So if that's what you're looking for, I have other videos on that where I go through the whole thing. So the first thing I think we should do here is probably just restate what L'Hopital's rule says. So it says, suppose F and G are differentiable on an open interval containing the point A and F of A equals G of A, which equals zero, and G prime of X does not equal zero if F does not equal A. So that, that matters because if those conditions hold, then this is really like the, the big thing that we care about with L'Hopital's rule. This limit, the limit as X approaches A of F of X over G of X is equal to taking the derivative of the top and the bottom function, the, the same limit going, to, but you just take the derivative of the top and the bottom function. And that's assuming that the, the limit on the right exists, of course. So this is kind of the idea behind L'Hopital's rule. But if you are familiar with it, you know that actually we have other ways we can kind of use this. So at first, when we talk about L'Hopital's rule, we think of this A as like a number, but we also know that this could count as like infinity. So I want to just talk about what are all the indeterminate forms that we want to use for L'Hopital's rule. So here they are. So all of them. So we've got zero over zero, infinity over infinity, um, zero times infinity, infinity minus infinity, and then these these powers, the in, these indeterminate powers. So if you get any one of these forms, then you can probably kind of either directly use L'Hopital's rule or kind of finagle the problem so that you can use L'Hopital's rule. So just as a note here, so this first form, that is what I cover in my intro to L'Hopital's rule. And then all of these forms here, I cover in part two of my series on L'Hopital's rule. And then this last column here, this is what I cover in part three, because this is kind of like a, a very different technique you have to use when you have an indeterminate power. And then I also have a part four, which is what happens when L'Hopital's rule just keeps cycling. So if you are looking for kind of more background on that, those are the videos that I've got. Okay, so let's now break this down. So for which type of indeterminate forms can you take the derivative of the top and the bottom function just right away? Okay, if you get either zero over zero or infinity over infinity as your um, indeterminate form, then you can just go ahead and, and it's that nice scenario then just take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So here is one look at this. So I've got the limit as x approaches zero, I've got four x squared over two times cosine x minus two. Okay, so the thing that you wanna do always is first identify what is that indeterminate form that you have. So if I were to plug this in, I get zero over and then this becomes two minus two. So I do have zero over zero. So you always wanna kind of figure out what is that indeterminate form that you're looking at. And now that I have zero over zero, now I know I can just take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So taking the derivative of the top, that would be eight X. And then taking the derivative of the bottom, that would be negative two sine X. Okay, so now if I try to plug in zero, what do I get? All right, now I get zero over zero just directly. So when that happens, then you just have to take the derivative again, as long as you get still that same indeterminate form. So now I take the limit as x approaches zero, take the derivative again, this will be eight over negative two cosine x. And now if I try plugging in zero, I will get eight over negative two, which equals negative four. And so now we're done. Now, just to contrast that technique, here, here's another one. So now I've got the limit, instead of it approaching a number, it's approaching infinity. So just the, the thing that you wanna think about is what happens in this limit as the top and the bottom approach infinity? Well, the top will approach positive infinity as will the bottom. So we have that infinity over infinity form. So once we identify that that's our indeterminate form, then we can go ahead and take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So taking the derivative of the top, that's one over X, taking the derivative of the bottom, this will be one third X to the negative two thirds. Okay, so in this case, we kind of wanna clean this up a little bit and simplify everything. So let's see, so this will become X 
to the two thirds over x. Okay, and so now I can simplify this just one more step to so the limit as x approaches infinity. And notice how I'm really consistent with my limit notation, by the way. So this becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x to the one third. So this now as x goes to infinity, the denominator just gets larger and larger. So this is getting larger. So the entire value of this then will just end up equaling zero. So then we're done. Okay, so what forms or wh sorry, what must you do for when you get like zero times infinity or infinity minus infinity? What do you do in those cases? Well, in those cases, then you want to manipulate the function so the limit is either back in that zero over zero or infinity over infinity form so that you can use L'Hopital's rule. So I've reviewed like a couple different ways to do this in, in that part two video, but just to kind of show you some examples of this. So here, I've got this limit as x approaches infinity of 3x times e to the negative x. So this guy here, this will be approaching infinity, while this guy here will end up approaching zero. So we have that zero times infinity form. So that's then setting off that, okay, I need, I need to manipulate this. Now in this particular example, it's not too bad to manipulate this because this has a negative exponent. So that's almost like low hanging fruit in the, in the idea that um, I can easily kind of just rewrite this like this. And so now look at how this, this slight change um, makes the problem different. So now as x goes to infinity, this part here is going to infinity, and then this part here is also going to infinity. So now I've got that infinity over infinity form, so I can take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So this is going to be um, 3 over e to the x when I take the derivative of the top and bottom. And now I have a fraction where the denominator is just going towards infinity, so the value of this whole thing, once again, will just end up equaling 0. So now let's contrast that to this example B here. So I've got x is approaching zero on the right of the natural log of five x minus the natural log of sine of x. So you have to know, and you might actually maybe want to just take a second to look at the graph of the natural log of x if you're not sure what happens as we go to zero on the right. But I'll just tell you that, so this is going to infinity and this will also end up going to infinity. So sine of x, as we get closer and closer to zero, this ends up going to zero. And so as we get closer to zero, the natural log of, the, the natural log as you get closer to zero goes to infinity. So what I end up having here is this infinity minus infinity form. Okay, so now I have to think about how to manipulate this. And in this case, once again, we, we kind of have something that is more like, um, like a low hanging fruit idea again, because I can use just properties of logarithms with this to rewrite this expression. So in this case, let's see. I'll rewrite this as the natural log of 5x over sine of x. And now I can actually just bring this natural log out and move my limit notation in like this. Okay, and so now notice what happens with this particular limit. So now in this case, this is going to zero this is going to zero. So now I've, I've manipulated this to get something in that zero over zero form. So I can use L'Hopital's rules. This would be the natural log now of the limit as x approaches zero on the right of five, oops, just five, just five over cosine of x, which now if I evaluate this, this becomes the natural log of five over one so my final answer will just be the natural log of five. And so that's it for that particular one. Now there's other ways that you can manipulate these types of problems. So if you do need a review on that, you can check out my, my part two video and I go through kind of all of the standard tricks you might have to use when something like this comes up. Okay, so now let's talk about what do you do with indeterminate powers. Um, so you have to manipulate these using the natural log, although I, I wanna just kind of remind you of the whole process. So. The idea behind this actually is, so if, if the limit as x approaches a of whatever our function is, so we, we, we take the natural log of that function and we find that limit, and then we actually use this little property here. So the actual limit of our function will be found by taking e to the natural log of f of x. 
because e to the natural log of f of x, this is equal to this. And I break that all down in my part three video. So if you want to see a, a more detailed explanation, you can check that out. And so then what ends up happening is we basically end up with the limit of e to the l. So we make this manipulation, we find this limit, and then we ultimately take e to that limit. And this can be either a finite or an infinite limit, by the way. And so, like I said, the whole thing about this is we are really relying on the fact this is a property. E to the natural log of x equals x. So that's, that's really what we're using with um, that whole little property there. So just to show you one example of how this, this might work. So in this case, this is going to give me something like 0 to the infinity. That's my indeterminate form. So that means I can use what I just talked about. So what you want to do then is you want to, let's see, take the natural log. And in doing that, now I get to manipulate this. This becomes the limit as x approaches 0 on the right of negative 1 over the natural log of x times the natural log of x. And so now you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh great, these cancel out, and they do. And so then you're just left with the limit as x approaches 0 on the right of negative 1, so this just equals negative 1. Now, the thing to remember here, though, is that we took the natural log of this function, so we're not done manipulating this. So the whole, whole idea behind this whole process here is then after we find that limit, we need to really take e to that limit. So my answer my final answer will be e to the negative 1. So again, if you want to see that in more detail, I have that whole video where I break that down over several different examples, so you can check that out. Um, I'll have it in the links below. So finally, what do you do if L'Hopital's rule just starts cycling on you? You're trying to use it and it's not working, it just keeps giving you more and more derivatives and it's, it's not like converging to a value. Well, then you just have to find another method. So just to give you a, a quick idea of how this might look, so let's say that I've got this limit as x approaches 0 on the right. So what is this going to give me? Well, for each of these, as I go closer and closer to 0 on the right, cotangent ends up going to positive infinity, as does cosecant. So I end up with this infinity over infinity form. OK, so then I'm like, great, I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I take the derivative of this. So that's going to give me negative cosecant squared of x over negative cosecant x cotangent x. And if I simplify that, so then you see, so I get this becomes cosecant x over cotangent x. And so you can see now we, we really didn't get any closer to like finding the derivative, right? And if I take this derivative again, I'm just going to like keep flip flopping back and forth. So I can already tell that L'Hopital's rule is not going to work here. So now I have to try another approach. So let me clear some space. So let's express the top and bottom functions in their like sine and, and cosine form. So cotangent of x is cosine of x over sine of x. And then cosecant of x is 1 over sine of x. So now there's some manipulations that I can make. So just to be nice and thorough, so this becomes cosine of x over sine of x divided by 1 over sine of x, which then allows me to flip that second fraction. And now you should be able to see exactly how this is going to work, sine of x. So now I can see that those signs both cancel out. And so then I'm just left with the limit as x approaches 0 on the right of cosine of x. And so that's just going to equal 1. And so that's it. We're done. And so that is your kind of crash course summary of how L'Hopital's rule works. So if you watch this video, now you're realizing, oh, I want to go back and review. I have other videos with examples and then other videos where I break down all these techniques if you want to see more. So you can look in the description for all of that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.